the superficial back line. The main function of it posturally is to keep us upright, like Batman over here. The movement function is to put us into extension or hyperextension. It starts from the eyebrows, goes over top of the skull, comes down the erector spinae group, goes down to the sacrum, splits off into each leg, going into the hamstring complex, down to the gastroc and soleus, wraps around the foot and ends on the plantar surface of the phalanges. It also includes flexion of the knee and plantar flexion. Some imbalances include it being underactive, which would lead the trunk to fall forward, or it's overactive, would lead it back. Superficial front line. It opposes the superficial back line, so which means instead of putting us into extension, it brings us into flexion. And at the knee, it keeps it in extension and dorsiflexes the ankle. And as we can see on Batman here, he is in extension of the knee and dorsiflexion. Some of the structures in the superficial front line include the scalp fascia, which comes down to the sternocleidomastoid, which is muscles right down the neck here, down the sternum onto the rectus abdominis, down to the rectus femoris and the quadricep group, and down to the anterior tibialis, onto the phalanges on the dorsi side. The lateral line creates lateral flexion and hip abduction and foot eversion. You can see pretty much go like that. Lift your hip up and yes, everts the foot. It is meant to keep the body balanced between left and right and forward and back. Some of the main structures include the peroneals, the TFL and the iliotibial tract which comes up all the way of the side. The glute max. Your internal and external obliques. All of your intercostals. The sternocleidomastoid. Spiral line. It's kind of complex, but the main movement pattern of it is to create rotation throughout the body, and posturally it's just to hold us up, basically. The main muscles that are used in the spiral line, starting from the back of the neck, is the uh, splenus capitis, coming down to the rhomboideus major and minor, and on the anterior end we have the serratus anterior. Going a little lower, we can see that it includes the internal and external obliques. And if we go down either, even further, it involves the bicep femoris, the TFL, and which would include the iliotibial tract. If we go down lower, it also includes the peroneals and the tibialis anterior. The main muscles being used in the back functional line are the latissimus dorsi, the lumbodorsal fascia, the glute max, and the vastus lateralis. The main muscles of the front functional line are the adductors of the leg, the rectus abdominis, and just the edges of the pectoralis major. The cool thing about the functional lines is that they can enhance our movements or make us more precise. For example, if a boxer wanted to punch someone, he wouldn't just 
punch him like that. You wouldn't get enough force behind it. Instead, you would add in some rotation and with some power from the legs as well, <clears throat> create a much stronger functional punch.